Good morning, everybody. We're back with day nine of Admin Code 2022. I actually started recording this video first, and I was spending a lot of time drawing grids. And then I realized, wait a minute, we don't actually care about these grids. The only thing we care about are the head and the tail themselves. So since I kind of just jumped straight into it there, the, the task today is called Rope Bridge. And what we're doing is we're modeling a very short rope uh, with these grids. And basically, um, it's a little bit like the game of life where um, we have to update the state of the board based on some simple rules. It's a little, I guess it's not, it's not that much like the game of life, though, because it's not, um, you know, it's not like an automaton. The, uh, there's actually some input here where we're actually moving um, we're moving the head of the rope and the tail is supposed to follow based on some rules. So it looks kind of visually a little bit like the game of life, but I, the rules are significantly different. And again, they show all these examples graphically, which is nice to look at, and I think would be helpful for debugging. But really all we need to know are the positions of the ropes. So let's at least model the rope. And it has some X position and some Y position. All right, so we'll have a let me head equals rope new uh, new, and it'll start out at zero zero, and our tail will also start out at zero zero. Great, and we better at least impl debug for this. All right, so let's print line head and tail. Yeah, okay, it doesn't need to be new. Great. Now, our puzzle input is just this. So what we're going to have is something like a move method, I think. So we'll have um, fn move. Oh, move is reserved. So we'll have a move. Uh, it's going to take ref mute self, and it's just going to move. Oh, I guess it also has to tell us it's going to take a direction, uh, which I guess we'll just call direction, and it'll have a distance, which is the U size. Okay. <coughs> hmm. Now the thing is, if we move the head, I think we have to actually, we'll have to, we will not pass it a distance. We're going to do single moves at a time. So when we're reading this in, when we see something like this, <coughs> we're going to loop four times and call move r four times. Because each time we update the position of the head, we're going to have to check the position of the tail as well. Um, Great. So I did, I'm going to make a small uh, direction enum that just has the directions. We got R, U, L, D. And uh, let's see. It would be actually, it'd be really cool if we could derive uh, from stir for that, but um, stir for direction. But we'll just do a simple thing here. Match S R is okay R <laughs> L D U L D U uh, uh, air. supported okay uh, moving to a nearby wait really and we did 
and set this, but we'll just use parse error as usual. Great. We'll send that here. <laughs> oh no. Self it says self air here right now. I see why I've never done this before. Panic. Great. Okay, so now we can parse directions, and we still need to be able to move, right? So how do we move a row? We need to take self um, direction. We're going to match on dir, of course. Fill arms. If it's right, we are going to increment self dot x, self dot x plus one. If it's up, then it'll be self dot y plus one, self dot x minus one, and down is self dot y minus one. Great, so that's how we do move. And <coughs> so that's how we move. The only issue is uh, there's also diagonals kind of forgot about that. So this is another situation kind of like one of the early days where it looks like maybe the left rope and the right rope are even different types. But we might be able to just do the tail. We can kind of do the tail stuff in line. Uh, anyway, let's start looking at our parser. So let's let s equal load sample or line in S <clears throat> we need to split the line split uh oh I messed something up maybe oh S dot lines split S white space and let's just collect it into a vec and we will do um, direction from stir on SP0. D is that. And then Q size from stir SP1 will be distance. We'll call it M for magnitude. Or uh, blank in zero to m, we will call head dot move uh, d. And then let's go ahead and debug head inside of this. Expected move. I saw that earlier, but kind of ignored it, obviously. <coughs> Borrow a moved value head. Value borrowed here after move. Oh, 
it's the debug. Oh my goodness. Wow, I could not figure out why my method was doing that. Okay, so we start out at zero, zero. What? change it never changes name is four <laughs> what master self dot x hmm am I not actually right view size cannot be dereferenced yeah um that's weird and what's the direction? Ah, uh, direction. Bug. Okay, so we got four R. Uh, it appears not to be changing, which is weird. Okay. Um, head dot move. <laughs> okay. Zero. This is just incredible. What's going on? Self dot x. Um. Oh. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. Good lord. Okay. Get rid of all of this. All right, now we can look at the head the whole way through. Um, dev. Just please leave me alone. Great. Okay. We can now look at the head moving. Great. Every time we move the head, we also need to move the tail. So head move. Now, we have to determine how to move the tail. We also don't have any kind of like diagonal direction, so. Um, yeah, I guess we can add more directions, right? Let's do, so this is X, we're going to do these, um, let's do them not up, right, left, down, but north, south, east, west. Uh, so right is going to be east, call this E for east. Because that will match nicely with the diagonal motions, because we'll have like northeast, northwest, uh, southwest, southeast. So when we go this one, this is north, up is north, whoops, uh, down is south, and this is west. So now if we go back to our directions, we can add more stuff. <laughs> Let's put these north, yeah, new is perfect, north, south, east, west. And then let's go ahead and add northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. And we don't have to mess with our fromster stuff, but we will do this. So northeast says that we do two things. Um, well, I mean, actually, we can do we can do this um, e. We can move um, north and east. Uh, and 
and similarly for the other ones. We'll move north and west. Same here. Same here. South and east. South and west. Great. Okay. So now that that's how we'll move diagonally. Now we just have to decide how to do that based on the relative positions of the head and the tail. Okay. Um, so the rules are if the head is directly up, down, left, right, you just move in that direction. So let's just, I'm not sure, let's call it like compare for now. Probably there's a better name, so we'll take a self and an other, um, which is also a self. And it's going to return a direction, I think. <coughs> uh, sure. This should take a reference to a self. Um, all right. If self.x equals other.x. So let's think about this. This means that they are in the same column, in the same x value. Um, we always have, I guess we should do this. If self equals other, uh, I guess this should be an option direction because there is a case where we just don't do anything. If self equals other, just return none right away. Oh, here comes the dog. Uh, these need to be partial EQ. They're already in the same spot, don't do anything. If now, so now we know that our y's are different. Okay, so we need to move in the direction of um, well, we basically just need to move towards self. This is supposed to return direction for tail to move based on position of head. So, well, I guess for other to move based on the position of self. So, okay, we're in the same column. So we want if self.y is greater than other.y, we're going to return um, sum use direction star. So our y, we're above uh, the heads above the tail. So the tail needs to move north. Else return some south. Okay. Then we can look at the other um, orthogonal case. If self dot y is other dot y, then if um, x is greater, our x is greater than other, we move east or west. Great. <coughs> now we need to look at the, di the diagonal pieces aren't touching. So again, this is a pretty um, literal translation of the rules. If the head is up, down, left, right, we handle um, up. Yeah, we handled up. We actually handled it in exactly that order. Up, down, uh, left, right. Well, we did right, left. <laughs> but anyway. The tail must also move one step in that direction so it remains close enough. Otherwise, if they aren't touching and aren't in the same row or column, so now we're down to this part, the tail moves one step diagonally to keep up. So I think the last case is if self.x, well there are four cases here, self.x is greater than other.x, then there are two cases here. Um, if self.y is 
greater than other dot y. So this means we're farther to the right and farther up. So we're gonna have to, the tail needs to move northeast. Return sum northeast. If our, um, our x is greater and y is less, then it's southeast. Southeast. And then, of course, we have the else on the outer comparison with similar things, but with west. So our x is this way. Oh, OK, sure. Well, this is fine for now. I think that's right. So this else means that self.x is less than other, which means we're to the left. So yeah, of course, it's going to be west. And then our y is greater, needs to move north. Great. So I think what Clippy's telling me, the first thing is that I can get rid of all of this, because this is, OK, sure, we can collapse the block. And then we also don't need the explicit returns. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> we can't collapse this one because um, this is not just uh, an else, it's an else if this. So it'd be repetitive to say it twice. All right, so we're going to move the head. Then we're going to say tail.compare. Oh, no, no, head.compare tail and we'll say if let sum er equals this we're going to tail.move er. so I think that should do it and then we just need to keep track of all the positions of the tail uh, and the positions will be given by x, y pairs. I think we can use a hash set. Um, let new counter equals hash set new. Tail.move. And we will just do, what are we going to do? Uh, I guess we're going to do an insert. Uh, Well, no, we'll just insert a tuple of tail.x, tail.y. And every time we move the tail, we'll do the same thing. And I think that's probably it. We just need to print counter.length at the end. 21. That is not the right answer, I'm pretty sure. 13. Uh, <laughs> OK. Well, time to do some debugging. I guess we have to debug. How about move it there? Did I do this all in the right order? Return direction for other to move based on position of self. All right. Uh, so let's debug head. and tail on each iteration. Now these could be copied, but I just haven't done that. Okay, so they both start out at 0, 0. Let's go through the example. Start at 0, 0. Right 4, we should go, yep, 1, 0, head moves. Head moves, tail moves, head moves. All right, so yeah, one, one, two, two, three, three. I'm guessing we messed something up with our diagonals. One, two, three, four. So, so head ends up, this is zero, one, two, three, four. Head ends up at four. Okay, then we have up four. Okay, so that's four. So we go four, one. 
Uh, oh, the tail only moves if they're not touching. Oh, it doesn't move every time. Oh, duh, because then if it moved every time, it would just, um, okay, I see, yes. So this is not if they're equal. This is if, um, let's see. So I think it's self dot x. Uh, it's annoying to do subtractions here. Um, all right, let's let's compare. Let's do the distance between them. Fn dist self other self b size. So what we want to do here? Let uh, s x be um, self dot x as i size. Let s y be self dot y as i size. This way we don't have to worry about the. Um, we don't have to worry about the signs. Other. Okay, we're going to return. Uh, S x minus S y. Nope. <laughs> o x. How? Two. Uh, plus. S y. Oh wow! I really messed this up. O x. S y minus O y. Pow two. And then <laughs> we want to take the square root of that. I'm not sure if we can even do that. Uh, maybe we'll just do this. And then we will round that as b size. That is kind of ridiculous. But if self dot dist other greater than uh, less than or equal to one, <coughs> thirteen. All right, beautiful. So we're yeah we're just checking the distance between the two. Um, and we could have enumerated all the cases right, like if self dot x, but but then the issue is I was gonna have to convert them to i sizes anyway. Because you can't just do the u size difference because it can go negative. I guess I could have made them all i sizes from the beginning, though. Probably that wouldn't have been the best thing to do. Let's try it on the input. Well, attempted to subtract with overflow. Yes, that's right. Um, so let's do self.x. Saturating. Okay, saturating. Yeah. Saturating add. Because basically, what we want to. Um, oh, wait. Actually, maybe we can. Yeah, I think. Okay, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Just undo everything. And I guess we need to be able to go negative. So these should be eye sizes. That's all. Yep. B size. Should be I size. That might be it, actually. Debug. Oh, and now our distance thing is easier, of course. Let's see if we got it. That's the right answer. All right. 
let's fix this. Yeah, okay, now now my arguments about the distance thing aren't as um, significant. Okay, let's take a look at part two. The river is getting a lot closer than you remember. Okay, they're whipping towards you. Oh, wow. Still need to support longer ropes. Oh, no. Ten knots. One knot is still the head of the rope. Moves according to a series of motions. Each knot further down follows the knot in front of it. Oh, okay. That's, that's fine, I think. But with the knots marked. There we go. So now we just loop over the uh, vector of knots and um, yeah, we loop over vector of knots and you update each one based on the previous one. So no problem actually. Now you need to keep track of the positions the new tail visits. In this example the tail never moves. Yeah. Oh. More types of motions are possible than before. Wait, why is that? Wow, that really, that actually looks like a rope. The animations for this one are gonna be cool. Pretty cool. Um, the tail of the rope visits at least once. I don't really get what they mean by more motions are possible now. More types of motions are possible than before. Individual steps are not shown. H. Anyway, all right, let's 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 commit this. Day nine, part one. Now, let's see. So instead of having a single tail, we will do, maybe we don't even have a head. We might just have ropes. Let me ropes equal rope. Let's see if we can get this to work for um, vec of rope new zero, zero. Uh, let's see if we can get the new logic to work. Rope's not cloned. Rope needs to be cloned. It's actually copied too. I mean, it's just two eye sizes. Great. Um, yes. The last element is rope. Well, uh, maybe can we create? We can't take. We can't. Uh, yeah, we can't keep a reference to it because we're going to need to refer to it mutably later on. We can do when we say tail. What we really mean is ropes. Uh, but L equals two. Let's just do it like this. Because then I can say ropes of L minus one dot x. Ropes L minus one. Great. Uh, yes. So for each of these, when we see head, that now means ropes of zero gonna move the rope uh, and then we start looping so for rope in ropes one on uh, this actually we need to borrow this mutably so we'll see ropes one on dot iter mute We have to. This might we might need to enumerate this. I rope. Dot enumerate. If so, let head head will be ropes of I minus one. And this is just tail. I see. Ropes I minus one. Hmm. Uh, 
that's a little tough. <laughs> that is a little tough right there. Uh, I really don't want to have to like split the ropes. You know. Oh, oh, wait. I know. I remember this. No, I don't remember this. Um, man. Can we do it out here? I don't think so. No, th and this has to update each time. Duh. Um. Wow. Yes, that is a tough one right there. This is a, uh, a serious rust moment right here. Um, wow. can do is um, we can take ropes up to L minus one zip uh, iter uh, zip with this Say head tail in pairs. Oops. All right. Uh, iter dot clone. Because we're not going to be modifying the first part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let heads equal this. Uh, we might have to clone, we have to clone the first part. Clone diet. We can't clone this. Clone this. Oh, come on. Come on. <sighs> and we can't do intermute on both because it will have two mutable, uh, mutable things. Okay. So I think. This is so stupid. Two vec. So get a new owned copy of this, right? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, let v equal this. V dot iter. Now we don't need clone. That's a little bit upsetting, but what can you do? Pin dot compare tail. And now tail is fine, actually. Okay, great. So that does work. And now all we have to do is change L to 10. And let's see if we got it right. No, too high. General tips on the about page. Okay. Well, I guess we're gonna have to look more closely at what they mean by different types of... Oh, I forgot to run it on the sample. I always do that. 16. Okay, wow. Now the tail, number nine, visits 36 positions. Um, oh, right. In this example, the tail never moves. 
So our head, our tail should have actually not moved. Oh, because we're doing this. Yeah, we're counting it completely wrong. We were counting the number of every tail move. I knew we were forgetting something. Okay, so each time, uh, if head compare tail. Now, are we doing, is this right actually? Heads, tails, or head, tail, and pairs, if yes. Oh, wait, can we not do this at all? Whoa, yeah, we can't do this actually. Okay, no, this is completely wrong. This is completely wrong. Because we zip together the heads and the tails out here. And we need to. So this this only works in the two case. Yeah, exactly. Because we are only moving. Let's fix this part first. So we can fix this part actually. This does need to be ropes L minus one x ropes l minus one y so that's fine um this might work still for two but i'll try to keep explaining why this is wrong 60 11 i think is our answer right 60 11. okay now the reason this works yeah this only works for the two case because what I was trying to say before, exactly this borrow checking stuff we were looking at a second ago, um, is that we're determining the heads here, and then we're, we're modifying the tails, but we're not modifying the heads. So it works on the first iteration because we updated the head out here. Update the head, then we need to look at the tail. Um, but once we're in this loop, we're only modifying the tails part of the zip. We're not, we're not then moving the tail to the head. Oh boy. Yeah, so my, actually my, what I wrote first is what we really want. Um, yeah. So we need to move the head, move the head. And then we really need to do the first thing I wrote in ropes one on dot intermute dot enumerate. This is what we really need. Um, where head is ropes of i minus one. Yeah, but that's not allowed, clearly not allowed. Cannot borrow ropes as immutable because it is also borrowed as mutable. So what we might have to do is, I guess we can have let mute head equal, um, it's initially set to ropes of zero, right? And I think maybe we can do head. And then each time we go through, we set head to ropes of i. And we can, we can clone it at this point, it's not a big deal. Um, Actually, I think we can set it to tail dot clump. Copy. Well. Okay, cool. Oh, maybe that'll work. So we still get 6011. Let's go back to our sample and 10. One, okay. Input, me, we've got it now. 24, 19. That is less than last time. Yes, that's the right answer. Uh, we got our stars. Have a nice day.